How is uh, your squad looking injury-wise, Neil, off the back of the international break? Well, first of all, I'd uh, like to apologise for, for being late. Just dealing with a matter there that just one of these unforeseen things that crops up from time to time, so I apologise for my tardiness. Um, you know, and Cham and Roger have been training this week. Uh, Kieran, he's had a bit of a reaction today, so he may be a doubt. So we'll have to assess him tomorrow. <clears throat> Bankovic is, you know, coming along sort of slowly as well in terms of Simonovic is back training, just modifying his training. So we're looking, you know, a little bit stronger as we go along. Well, you have to have a okay. Uh, both are fine, yeah. Both should be okay. The Kieran is the sorry, Kieran was is it what 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 you had over with the Scotland squad is it the calf? Uh huh. Same issue. Yeah, same issue. Yeah. So again, we'll leave it maybe as late as possible for that. See how he is. In terms of this game, how excited are you to be back involved with this game again? Yeah, I won't know until like you know you you smell it like the instincts sort of the old instincts sort of senses kick in. Um, Feeling quite calm at the minute, you know, trying not to get too distracted by all the the noise and the hype that surrounds it. So we've just been concentrating on what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and obviously preparing for another big game. In terms of the, the lead you've got, which is, is sizable, mm -hmm. if you were to win, do you think that it would pretty much be a hammer blow? Yeah, it'd be a hammer blow, yeah. But again, not insurmountable, but, um, you know, Again, we're talking hypothetically. The, the the objective is to win the game. You know, whenever we play our nearest rivals, so that's not going to change. And the mindset will be, you know, we're at home and take the game to the Rangers at every opportunity. How much has the, the defeat that the players suffered at Ibrox um, in December been discussed, if at all, in the build-up to that? Not discussed as yet. I'm sure it'll be lingering in the back of their minds, as all sort of defeats do. So there'll be uh, extra incentive or motivation for the players to, to win the game for that. Neil, to Kieran's injury aside, uh, it's just the first time since you've come back you've got real decisions to make in terms of personnel in certain areas. You have a fair idea though what the starting eleven is going to be. You know, Again, just waiting on, on some players coming through, hopefully. But yeah, it's, it's good to have that variety of choice at last. You know, and um, We've had a lot of injuries over the the piece and it's good to see some quality players coming back and it gives everyone a boost but the players who have played particularly since I've come in have, have done brilliantly you know considering we've been down on the numbers but obviously I'm not going to cry about it because we've got real strength and depth here. Just in terms of Kieran if you're assessing him just now with that reaction how would you assess his chances? <sighs> I'm not a physio like but he looked uncomfortable so we'll give it 24 hours see how it goes. Would you make of this, uh, it's going to be a new experience for you, hardly any Rangers fans there, like Ibrox, hardly any Celtic fans? Mm. We'll be all Celtic fans, so I'm quite pleased about that. And I want us to, I want them, I want Rangers to feel the noise, feel the power that we can generate in the stadium, not just from the team, but the supporters as well. I think that's what being at home in the derby is all about. We generate that atmosphere and we feed off that. From your experiences, how big is that home advantage in a game like this? Oh, it's always a huge advantage, you know, being at home. I think our record over recent years has been pretty good as well, and our home record over the last couple of years domestically has been superb. From the game that Celtic won earlier in the season at Celtic Park against Rangers, I think Stephen admitted that he got it wrong in that game. Would you expect them to approach the game differently than they did on that day? I don't know. You know, I have no idea. We will be pre hopefully be prepared for any eventuality. Um, I'm basically just focusing on what we are going to do. Hopefully, dominate the game and, and dominate the ball like we can. Uh, but I'd like us to be a bit more physical than we were at Ibrox. So you know that, that's always a an important attribute to have in a derby. When you managed the last in your last old firm game, Neil, did you think how did you finish with it? Can't remember that far back, Ron. To tell you the truth. Um, um, no, I mean at the time you're not thinking that obviously, um, but then you know you seen in hindsight what's happened to, to them, and then it, we all move on in football. So it's just a brilliant opportunity and a great experience to be back involved with it again. Are these games that you endure or enjoy? <laughs> <laughs> endure, endure. Um, 
I think once the whistle goes, you're fine, you know, and then you can take whatever comes with it, you know, but the build-up can be tough at times, you know, but again, this one's been a little bit different, you know, a lot more calmer, um, probably because we're in a, a decent position as we go into it as well, that helps. What kind of effect can a victory or a defeat have on your chances of being the manager full-time? No idea, I don't know, uh, but certainly my role here does not depend on tomorrow, or sorry, Sunday, result-wise, it'll depend on whether I can deliver the trophies, uh, I assume, and in particular the league title. So tomorrow, or sorry, Sunday's game, win, lose or draw, I'm not sure it's going to have a huge effect either way. Would you expect them just have to come out now given it? You know, I'm not going to, I don't know, I'm not going to speak on their behalf, you know, I'm not going to talk about the opposition, what their tactics are, you need to ask Steve in that. You know, when uh, Rangers beat Celtic three months ago, I think everybody thought there might be a real tight race, it was already tight at that time, three months on obviously. A ten point gap, are you surprised by that margin of gap? In what way? Well, did you think it would be tighter than that between Rangers and Celtic? Well, I think we all did, you know, come the, the start of the, the football after the winter break, with it only being well, level on points and made the game in hand, so I think it shows the consistency and the mentality of the team from from that defeat, really, to play so well domestically since then. Talk about it being a hammer blow, obviously, if Celtic do win on Sunday, 13 points with seven games to go, I mean, that is a huge margin. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah we said there that, um, you know, winning on Sunday, or the result on Sunday shouldn't affect your, your long-term position. Is that something that we said to you in terms of when you came back? No, I mean, everyone's speculating that, you know, and second-guessing and... As far as I'm aware, that's my remit here doesn't revolve around one game or two games. It revolves around what I do since coming in the door to the end of the season. Mm. I think Alustic, when he was on international duty, said that he would hear this week if he would be here beyond this week or this season. What, what can you tell us? Well, discussions are still ongoing at the minute. And we've got a, you know, a few others that we're speaking to as well, like so, you know, Scotty Sinclair and in, in near Beaton as well, so that's, that's ongoing at the minute. Okay. So you didn't want to focus on the opposition, understandable, but... Um, so you're going to ask me a question about no, the opposition? Well, in terms of one of their players, Morelos has yet to score in this fixture. How much can that be on a player, oh. given the enormity of the game? You're asking the wrong man. I never scored any goals, so, I mean... <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about goal scoring. I, 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 honestly... I hope that run continues on Sunday, put it that way. Neil, you've spoken since you've come in about how impressed you've been with the level of analysis and preparation that now goes on behind the scenes at the club and how different this is to when you were at the club. How much has that work that's done, maybe like analysis, help you since you've arrived at the club? And how do you utilise that work to prepare for matches? Well, it makes my job a lot easier and it takes off a lot of boxes for me. And, um, you know, in terms of the preparation for the games, it's excellent. And obviously post-match as well, the analysis that the guys provide for me is, you know, top quality. So, again, it's um, a lot of tools here that, you know, didn't have at my disposal the last time, which is, you know, really good oh, really good for the all-round all job, really. And I can sort of take a step back from a lot of things and let the experts get on with that side of things. And if I ask for anything, it's there for me. You know, I've set players. You know, phases of play, that type of stuff, individual performances for and against, it's, it's very, very high, very good. Obviously, a uh, respected football manager, know a lot about the game, but have you felt that that sort of instrument has actually helped further your own way of how you look at a game and how you prepare for a match? Yeah, some aspects, yeah, no, no question. Things that you miss, you know, and um, other aspects of the opposition play and, the, and even our own play. So, yeah, definitely helps you make you more rounded. Has there been much need to lift the, the Scotland boys because they had a very difficult week last week, the guys who were there? I think they're all glad to be back, you know. It was, I, my own opinion is just too much negativity, Charles. Just too much. Mm. Too much and, you know, rock bottom, all these kind of things. The, the, the group's only started, you know, three points out of six, all right, could have been better. But there's no reason to say why they can't get a result against Russia or win a double header against Cyprus or nick a point here and there of teams you're not expected to and then you're back on on course again you know so I just think we just go full pelt at it if we get a, a really bad result far too soon. There's been a lot of speculation around Alex as well which 
it's probably very difficult for him to deal with as well. And he, yeah, listen, we've all been in that situation, and he's strong enough, I'm sure, to, to deal with it all, and he understands that. But again, is it justified? I'm not so sure. You know, Stephen said that he's made your conference today, like Gary McCallis said, in light of what happened during the week, won't be in the dugout Will he on not? Sunday, uh, given that you've been subjected to such a moment. No, my thoughts are with Gary, you know, straight away. It's horrific. And I, you know, I'm sorry that he's not going to be in the dugout. Great football guy, you know, known him a long, long time, either, you know, playing against him or away from football. Certainly doesn't deserve that. And I hope they get the culprit and to get what's coming to him, you know, justice is served. It's just abhorrent. I can't put it any other way really and he's there with his wife as well so it's just a, from all of us here get well soon Gary and hope to see you soon